Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we compose STL files using Blender. So Blender can be a little bit intimidating to start off with, there's a lot of different functions that it can do, but one of the things it's fantastic at is posing STLs, and you can do that very easily. So what I've done is I've closed down all of the add-ons that might come up here, so this is going to be using just standard Blender. The only thing that's going to be a bit different is that my view is going to be red, and I've got some slightly different colored outlines. I'm just doing that because it's a lot easier to see on YouTube than the standard gray. There's a link in the description of how you can change your colors and make everything a bit more visible if you choose to, but you really don't need to for this. So what I'm gonna do is click on this cube and then delete it. And I'm gonna bring in an STL file that I've found. And what we can do is just click on that and drag it in. It will come up with this box and we can just click import STL and it will be here. Now, I'm just using an STL file from War Scenery's latest Kickstarter. This is really nice leader. I think you'll agree that that looks absolutely fantastic. And it's a pretty good example of the sort of thing you'll find with an STL file. If I just press tab to go into edit mode, you can see it's normally very triangulated and often that can cause a problem for some of Blender's functions, but for this one, it's not gonna be an issue at all, so you don't need to worry about that. There are two ways of posing in Blender, really. The first one is using rigging. We're not gonna be doing that today. It's a bit more in depth. It's not impossible to do, but it does work slightly better off of quads. And also, for something like this, we don't really need it. What we're instead gonna use is one of the sculpting tools called the Pose Brush. And we can get to that over here in the top left-hand corner where you go into sculpt mode. Now, before we do this, we just need to set something up to tell Blender what we're trying to do. And effectively, we need to tell Blender that we want to move this arm around and tell Blender where the joints are gonna be. Now, there's two ways of doing this. I wanna go through both ways, one at a time, but the overall process is really similar and it is very easy to do as long as you just follow this along step by step. So what we're gonna do is set up this elbow joint here, and then we'll have a look at how we can do some extra bits as well and how well this works. So what I'm gonna do is press tab, which brings me into edit mode. You can see that up here. And at the moment we're in vertex mode, we want to be in edge mode. You can either select up here or you can just press two. So one goes into vertex mode, two goes into edge mode, and three goes into face mode. We want edge mode, so I'm hitting two. You can see all my keys in the bottom right hand corner, so that will help you out. And all we need to do is select the edges that are gonna make up this joint. And it's not really too much of a problem where this is gonna be, just somewhere approximately at the elbow. So all we do is click, and we can then shift click to select more, and yours will probably be orange. As I said, I've done this to make it easier to see. Or, as long as one of them is the last point you selected, you can hold down control, and it will basically select to that point. So, I'm just gonna do that as a nice, easier way of making this work. Be careful, you can go inside the object. So, I'm just gonna click and just keep every so often checking that this looks about right. So just scrolling around, using the middle mouse button to move around and the mouse wheel to move in and out. And I'm just gonna keep selecting until I've got all the way around. It's important that you get the entirety of the way around without breaks, otherwise this isn't gonna work. So all the way up to, let's say there, and I've got this going entirely all the way around. Now we need to mark this as a seam. You can either do that by going to edge and then click mark seam, or you can press Control and E, and that'll bring up the same menu, and then mark seam again. And then if we press tab, we come out to object mode, and we've got that done. If you are in object mode, and we click off, you can see it's made a different colored line. Mine's red, yours might be a slightly different color. Now what this is gonna allow me to do, is if we come up to the top left and go into sculpt mode, we can now set up, I'm just gonna drag this out so you can see the name of my brushes more easily, we can set up this posing. And the first thing we need to do is tell Blender to look for this being broken up into parts. And we do that with a face set option. Just click face sets, initialize face sets, and we're gonna click by UV seams, which is what we just set up. And you'll notice that it's changed that bottom part into a different color, showing that this is now being considered as not a separate object, but just something slightly different. We're then gonna scroll down here and we're gonna to go to the pose brush. This is what's gonna allow this to work. Now, there's lots of options here on the side. If you can't see this, just press N and it brings it out. 
and we've got the tool option here and it looks a little bit intimidating but you don't really need to worry about most of them there's only two things we're actually going to care about here and the first one we're actually only going to care about one thing so what we're going to do is for the rotation origin we're going to click and go down to face sets now what this does if i move my mouse over the model you can see this white line and what that's done is it recognizes where this face set is joined to the other parts of the model which is here so around the elbow and then i can just click and drag and it'll move it so i can start you can press ctrl and z to undo it so i can start moving this around now obviously we could do something a little bit unnatural that's probably about as far as it's natural to go but you can see how quick this is going to be to pose this model in any way that we want so i could do something like that right now this isn't going to stop it impacting the rest of the model so you could make a mistake and do something horrible there but again Control and z will just simply undo it and we can move around there and then you can see there'll be a slight little bit of stretching there all we need to do is hold down shift and that means we automatically go into smoothing mode and then we can smooth that out if we want to Okay, and then we've got that posed. It is that easy to do this. It's unbelievable. Now, just to go a little bit further than that, I'm just gonna keep hitting Control and Z to go back to here. We can actually go further than this and make it even better. But that is the basis of this. So what I'm gonna do is just tab and go into edit mode again. And this time I'm gonna set up this bit on the shoulder. Now, this is a little bit less perfect because of the way it's sort of connecting to the armor there. But again, if we just avoid that, it won't be a problem. So I'm just gonna click. Oh, didn't like that, so I'll start again. Click, and then Control click. I think I pressed the wrong button. And then we're just gonna keep going down. I don't want to get right up to the armor on either side. That's probably gonna make it not look very nice. So I'm just giving a little bit I'm just gonna undo that and then do a little bit closer there so I can control it a little bit more fine if I do smaller increments of movement. And we're just avoiding that armor. I'll just fast forward through that because it's a little bit boring. If you ever get anything that looks a little bit too harsh, you can always press shift and unclick one of them and then click on the next one. So you can be a bit more selective should you choose to. And you can see this is not having a problem with the fact that this isn't quads. It's still managing to do this fairly well. And we've got that all nicely sorted. I'm going to press Control and E again, mark seam, and then we'll go into sculpt mode. And once again, I'm going to go to face sets, initialize face sets, and by UV seams. Now we can see it's worked out that there's many of these. So we've got two objects. Now we can still just pose the bottom part if we want to, or we can come to this one and then just pose it here. Though this will get confused, but something like that would be fine. What we can also do is use something called inverse kinematics. This is called IK, so pose IK segments. And at the moment it's set to one, meaning if I move here, we only move one segment. I can also do this to two. And now you'll see it started working out that there's the elbow and it goes up to the armpit. And now I can pose this a lot more readily. So this makes everything really easy to start moving around. Now, as always, we do have to be careful that we don't go too far. There are limits of what we can do here, but this means that we get a lot more posability. I'm probably gonna to come to this angle and pose. So we can do something like that, and that's gonna look perfectly fine. And we've got a much more natural movement of the shoulder. So really, really easy to do. Now there is one other thing that I want to mention. So I'm gonna come do this on this arm. So let's just tab and come into edit mode again. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on this shoulder. I'm just gonna speed through this. I'm just making sure I stay away from the edge of the armor wherever possible. And you can always undo things. If you press C, you get a circle select and you can use the middle mouse button to undo a lot. So I'm just gonna get rid of this part here that's looking like it's going too close to the armor and then I'll just shift select to get us started and then use control to go down. And again, staying at least a little bit of a gap away from the armor, control and E, mark seam, and we're good to go. Now tab will take us back to sculpt mode because that's what we were in before we went into edit mode. I'm gonna once again, initialize my face sets again. 
So UV seams, and we can see that we've got that all worked out. Now let's put that IK down to one, and we can still move this arm. But what I want to do is actually set up this elbow. Now I could do this again using the UV seams, but I want to show you there's another way as well, and that is that if you scroll down, you can also draw face sets here, and there's another one where you can box select face sets, or if you click and hold down, you can go to lasso face sets, which is really useful. So what I'm gonna do is just click and drag down there, round here, and I've just lasso selected all of that. And you can see I've got a pretty good go at that, but I have missed or sort of slightly got a bit of an ugly seam here. Now there's a few ways of dealing with that. If I go to draw face sets, which this was a slightly more obvious color, that's a little bit annoying, but oh well. I've got this seam here, which is a little bit jagged. Hopefully the color on YouTube's clear enough for that. If you start clicking, it will give an entirely new face set, which is not what you want. What you need to do is hold down control where you're on the face set you want to add to, and then click and drag and it will start adding to it. Or you can come to this one, which is the other side, control, click and drag, and I'll start unselecting. So I'm just gonna unselect some there. If you want to, you can also hold down shift while clicking, and that will start smoothing out your selection slightly, which will give a bit of a better join. Now this is having a slight effect on the geometry, so you do need to keep an eye on what you're doing and make sure that you're not causing yourself a problem, but this gives a really nice smooth sort of selection which looks really nice, and it just gives a slightly better seam. Right, so now we can do exactly the same thing. I just wanna show that other selection method. Let's come back to the pose brush. IK segments up to two, and then we can start moving this around. So I could do something like that, and then we could come here, and something like that. So he's looking a bit more menacing, like he's about to swing and strike. Does that look a little bit off? Maybe, let's just move his arm around a little bit there. So you can see how easy it is to pose things around. I'm just gonna go into my smooth brush. We can smooth this out so that we don't have an issue there with this edge. There we go, so it's looking much better and more natural. And I'm probably gonna have to do the same for this elbow here as well. So let's just smooth that out a little bit as well and that solved any of those slight wrinkles that we got there, and we're pretty good to go. Let's just smooth that one out as well. So suddenly it makes it really easy to get different poses on your models really nice and quickly, so we can change everything around really fast. Hopefully that's nice and useful, a free tool to add to your repertoire if you like kit brushing models together. If you are interested in this model from War Scenery, then the Kickstarter has finished, but you can still give late pledges to be able to get these models and they're very reasonably priced. They also come supported and unsupported, so you can do this with your unsupported models or just print out the supported ones nice and quickly. I'll leave a link to that Kickstarter in the description and their general website. If you did find that useful, please do hit the like button. It means that other people will be able to find it more easily if they're looking to do the same thing. If you're not subscribed to the channel, feel free to subscribe if you want to see more Blender content. And if you want to support the channel any further, we do have a Patreon page where you get these videos a week ahead of time, ad-free, and other great perks as well. Have a great day, guys.